Jessica, Grim After Dark, starring John and Danny. Tricky Dick. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's John and Danny. Hello. I'm going to sit here and talk a little bit and not just stare blankly in a space as I've been often coached that I do. But anyway, uh, welcome to Grim After Dark. My name is John. We are the Frontline Gaming Network's weekly interview show where we hit the high points of the last week in the Warhammer community and talk to the best players and content creators from around the world about the one thing we all love, Warhammer. Um, tonight, very special episode. We welcome Ennis Wilson. He is one of the best players in Scotland. And even though that's saying that this is the whitest slice of white bread, um, he's a great player. And we've had him come on to compete against Danny in our first ever Iron General challenge. What is Iron General? It's super simple. Uh, Danny and Ennis have both been asked to write a, a list, an army list for Tyranids, Black Templars, and Necrons. With each of those lists having to include one unloved or underused unit. Um, who has the better list? That's for you all to decide. Or me. Who, who knows? Whoever, which whatever one of us doesn't really have a say. Um, anyway, my co-host today needs some introduction. He's the terror of the mid-tables and is the latest in a long line of podcasters to fall into a pyramid scheme. Uh, it's Danny McDivitt. Danny, hello. Hi, John. How what are you? pyramid scheme have I fallen into? Can you tell me, please? <laughs> <laughs> personal groomers but that's for another podcast oh um, yeah okay fair true i have done yeah that. promo code falcon uh so danny the gw open was last weekend uh we saw that even if you import a manny chima uh you still can't stop the sigler sweep of every gw event this year so far it's yeah it's the um, patented sigler sweep i think it's really important is, that we uh that we yeah. make sure that everybody knows that term <laughs> The, the Siegler sweep of Siegler GW sweep. events. Yep. Um, more importantly, uh, along with the new quarterly balance update, which we, we, which we saw at the Dallas event, uh, we also saw like a greater spread of young guns kind of coming up through the ranks. So we had like Anthony Vanella, Justin Moore, uh, Brian Jones all cracking the top 10. Uh, what was your thought in general on the GW event? And who do you think is going to finally dethrone Siegler and stop the sweep? <laughs> Is that like a stop the steal joke? I'm just yeah, it is. yeah, okay, it is. cool, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, only stop. legitimate battle points. Stop the Siegler, right? So, like, I think, <laughs> I I think it's probably going to be pretty hard for anybody to stop him since there's no more events, um, except for the invitation, like which he's not going to. So, or that's what I've heard anyway. So we'll see if that actually coalesces or not. Um, but. Like uh, Shocking yeah. news for LVO and Cruise Hammer and all these other events if there's no more events happening. No, 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 no. I meant there's no more GW <laughs> events. Those are the only ones Siegler goes to anymore. Did Are you That's not paying fair. attention to that? Yeah, he's like, oh, no, no, no I only go to the official events, you guys. Like... <laughs> The other ones I have no time for. <laughs> it's the um, it's the sponsored logo on the BCP app. Like that's the only go. ones he goes to because you know <laughs> legally it's all he's allowed to go to. Yeah, well, and the the legal arrangement that Art of War and Games Workshop clearly have uh, is showing to really <laughs> prove to be extremely beneficial for Siegler uh, as, he, yeah. as he nets those wins, right? I mean, am I saying Nick Nanavati is sl uh, like slipping him information from his commentary position? Not overtly. That yeah, would be really rude. Not directly, but, but I might imply not directly. a little. Yeah, we might imply a little bit. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, someone else in attendance at the GW Open was a frontline head honcho, Reese Robbins, uh, seen here Fantastic. taking a selfie in a way that is both <laughs> endearing and confirms that he isn't big into technology. Uh, Danny, you have very strong opinions on this. Please, can you break down this selfie for us? Well, first of all, I just like to note that if you really zoom in on his eyes, you can really see the sadness there and kind of the technophobia. <laughs> like it just kind of coalesces and pools there. Also, you've got that, <laughs> you've got that shiny dome. He looks like he's ready to go. Like uh, if you click on the actual picture, like you can see his face technically. So it's not like it's not actually the worst selfie you've ever seen. It just looks like it. From the preview um but you can see there that he's also shaved off his mustache for some reason so i hope things are going well at home for 
uh, <laughs> for Reese because it seems like he might be. I don't know. Uh, I, I feel like he might be. Uh, he might be suffering from some depression or something like that. Who knows? Uh, it looks like maybe it's gotten to him a little bit. He's he's now reporting on events that other people are running. Like he's just going there and hanging out. I guess like are you playing? No, just reporting on it. No, no, not even reporting. He's like, I just <laughs> there was an event and I thought I was just supposed to go. <laughs> That's what this well, note into my chest says. <laughs> what what started as a light-hearted joke about uh, Reese's ability to take a selfie has turned into a very serious concern for his mental well-being. So right. <laughs> thanks for that hard right turn Reese, there. We're, we're here for you. Well, um, yeah. anyways. <laughs> <laughs> From <laughs> In a strictly work-related sense. <laughs> well, if anyone's watched the no, show I'm or listened kidding. to the show before, they, they know we're not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shocking news from Nottingham uh, as Warhammer World shuts down until further notice. Mm. Uh, those non disclosure agreement ignoring leakers went too far uh, as a burst pipe has made the building unreachable. Um, this is the biggest is, leak of all, John. <laughs> this is the biggest leak of all. Uh, I was going to say GW is aware of the issue with the pipe and they will address it with an update in three months. <laughs> um, yeah, the next quarterly update should take care quarterly of that, update. I think, right? That, that, yeah. is, that, is, that is all of, yeah, that's the, the joke. That's why I wanted to put that in there. Um, attention oh, all Warhammer clubs. This poster on Warhammer 40k fans is looking for a Warhammer group with lots of hunks on the West Coast. Um, if you're reading this and think you fit the description, you don't. Uh, unless, of course, you're like Henry Cavill, in which case, please come on our terrible third-rate podcast. Uh, we won't pay you, uh, but we can give you literally dozens of exposure for the eight people who show up every week to look at it. Um, and I do want to point out, Danny, that we did our typical Grim After Dark censorship. Um, we changed the name of the poster to Seth Austin. Yeah, or did, was it just Seth in the first place? Who knows? I'm surprised he's moving. I thought he had a pretty sweet gig going, but you know, I, I, what, what, what do I know? I'm glad, though, that he's looking for love. Even if it's in the wrong places. <laughs> yeah. Well, the worst romantic comedy of 2022. Um, Seth and the Gaming Club. Um, finally tonight, uh, Nazis. Well, Oh, no, man. Not necessarily John, Hold on a minute. Do we have to? We do. Um, okay. right. But last week, Games Workshop released a statement saying that people with uh, certain views have no place in our community. Um, and there, there are no good guys in 40K. Uh, letting people know the dictionary, to the dictionary definition of satire, uh, like a university student who was 40 words short of their limit, uh, mm-hmm. while also saying the Imperium is a bad place. How did that go? Uh, as you can see from the tweet we put out in the Grim After Dark Twitter page, not great. <laughs> um, it didn't go good. It didn't go well at all. Personally, I just kind of want to share with everyone that if a company sends a message saying Nazis are bad, the Imperium is satire. You probably shouldn't copy it. And your first instinctual reaction is to point out that the Imperium is not satire. You're probably the problem and you should stop. Uh, if you, if your first instinct is to call it virtual signaling, signaling and not being from a British company in an area that was literally bombed by Nazis, um, you're probably part of the problem. Uh, and if you cannot, and if you cannot see that by not seeing a notice that says Nazis are bad or settings are meant, not meant to be aspirations, um, you probably need to reevaluate. All right, and we've lost John. He's totally gone. He's disappeared. Uh, he's been censored by FLG. So, wh- welcome your new host and overlord. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure the the internet company thought John's takes were just a little too spicy for some reason, even though they weren't. Like, <laughs> let's be honest. And so, <laughs> finally, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe someday you'll be back on. John is rejoin in the process of rejoining us. Uh, it is confirmed he was kicked out by Nazis. Um, so I, I don't know. Maybe they sent him. Hello. Hey, he's I'm back. back. Yeah, the, the Nazis got to me. Um, like I said, I think Danny. I just got like super frustrated. Yeah, like thanks, Tamadachi Express. The hot take of Nazis are bad did get me kicked off this show. Um, like I just I got really bothered this week. But then putting out this message and oh, and dude, one, John, don't get kicked off again. <laughs> one, a, a, a certain uh, a streamer um, of oh, infamy no. streamed for five hours about this. 
saying the message was wrong. How can you survive through five hours of that? It's just, mm, yeah, I've said my piece. Danny, I'm sure you had some very good points in the meantime. I mean, John, uh, I, yeah. I well, hey, look, anybody who is familiar with the 24-hour news cycle knows that you can talk about anything for 24 hours, much less five hours. So, However, we can barely talk about stuff for like 55, 60 minutes a week. <laughs> well, so we're not a part hey, of that news cycle. Look, look, man, I didn't say we were, we were professionals. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And yes, Tam oh God, why did Seth do that? Yeah, Seth was the one who kicked me off. So I'm glad we can insinuate lots from that. Yep. Anyway, rant over. No more. Back to the lighthearted fun. Uh, Danny, why don't you let us know about this next segment? Oh, um, do you want me to talk about Iron General? I do. I do. Yeah, it's right. a completely original concept we didn't steal from another podcast. Yeah, it's, to it's totally not a concept that we stole from our own podcast. So it's like, it's fair. I don't know. Stealing from yourself. You know it's good when you start recycling your own ideas. Yep. And we here at Mob, I mean Grim After Dark, are known <laughs> for consistently uh, coming up with our own original new material and never recycling any kind of old material that we've ever used in the past. So Iron General It's in the style guide. We're not allowed to <laughs> recycle you. old Thank material. You. Thank you, John. Thanks for... <laughs> thanks for the the uh the confidence booster anyway so today uh iron general what we're going to do is we, we've uh we've pre-made some lists john has specified a secret ingredient kind of like the uh the show iron chef that we have to use in our lists now uh for some reason john has chosen like two of the lists have to include an incredibly cheap unit which like <laughs> doesn't take up that many points so you're just going to probably see some kind of like normal be, looking like let me be real with and, you i went through i completely i went through all the codexes i certainly didn't look at wahapedia at a list of different codex entries and wasn't like i haven't seen that one in a while okay. can't go from there that was the entirety of the decision process yeah well good i'm glad that you did did some work that's good um the minimum amount did, of work more than i did so <laughs> <laughs> Um, so today we'll be reviewing a Necron list, a, uh, uh, a Tyranids list, and a, a Black Templars list um, that Ennis, uh, Ennis and I have constructed to kind of uh, and kind of talk about these. Now, these lists are not just judged on overall power. There's also some style points available, um, and I'm changing the rules to reflect that so that I get some points. Um, Heck but yeah. like, <laughs> uh, so it's not just based on the total power of the list, but also some of the kind of jank and some cool stuff that's going on in there. So. Uh, with that guys, kind of introduction, uh, oh yeah, say, and the, we're gonna have Ennis on. Let's talk yeah. about Ennis for a minute. Yeah, Ennis, Ennis Wilson, captain of Team Scotland. Yeah. So uh, for, for the, did you know, Danny, Warhammer can be played in teams as well. I know it doesn't really no. happen over here, um, but it can be. Look, as an American, it's really important that like my rights <laughs> are more like trump other people's rights because like obviously like so my rights to a game shouldn't be confined <laughs> by a team. Um, honest to God, American Warhammer, that's what it tells me, right? So, yeah. yeah, if I lose, I lose on my own regard and not because I've been paired purposely into a bad matchup, right? Like, like you know, that you know, that uh, our guest, Ennis Wilson, and if you don't know who Ennis Wilson is, uh, check out his Twitter. Uh, he's uh, he's got some get, spicy, like, spicy for his Scotsman takes. I got um, like half my jokes from there, so I'd rather you didn't because then that okay. really rumbles, yeah, fair. rumbles. Yeah, don't my... look. Sorry, don't look at any of his social media or anything like that. He's uh, he's a terrible person anyway. So let's welcome Ennis Wilson on the show. Hey, well, hello. First of all, I want to say I am really sorry. I was one hundred percent sure Alaska was in Canada because uh, that's why I've worn the <laughs> the Canada shirt. So uh, apologies for that one, and I'm going to just roll with it anyway because I don't care. Um, <laughs> thank you all for having me. Thank you for coming on at a very socially acceptable time where you're at. It's only 3 a.m. I'm basically up at this time anyway, right? <laughs> I was going to say, all the good army list building discussion goes on after 3 a.m., no matter where you are there. Exactly. So, yeah. So, yeah, we wanted to have you on. Uh, like I said, as, as, a, as someone, like we said, you just won a major, uh, which we like to think is because we asked you on, but it's probably more likely because you, you know practice and know your army. Um, and now you're here. To kind of talk about some lists that you guys constructed. So like uh, Danny said earlier, 
Both of you guys created lists using our little secret ingredient. We're going to start with the Tyranid list here uh, because they're sort of the new hotness coming out of, out of Octarius too. Uh, the brief for both of you, and we're going to start with our guest on this one here who can describe his list, was you were to create a 2,000 point Tyranid list for a singles event. Um, but the secret ingredient unit was a pyrovore. Uh, and although I said for the Necro one, I picked it off of a unit list of things I hadn't seen in a long time. Uh, the Pyrovore holds a very special place in my heart, mainly for one meme uh, of him holding a balloon and looking really sad. And that is like literally why I bought 5,000 points of Tyranids. Um, so no, no, the secret ingredient is not Hiveguard, uh, Captain Andrew. That just happens to be, that's the salt of a Tyranid <laughs> army list. It's added to flavor everything. Uh, but Ennis, why don't you take us through your 2,000 point Tyranid army list? Absolutely. So, for Tyranids, we are going to go with the incredibly innovative decision. We're playing a Leviathan Battalion Detachment. We are running the Swarm Lord, a Malanthrope with the standard Swarm Leader, which gives the full rerolls to hit. And then he has the Alpha Leader Beast ability to allow me to redeploy two units, and the Adaptive Neural Lobe that lets me regenerate CP. We have two squads of 30 Turbogons with Devourers, a 17 of Gene Stealers with Scything Talons and four Acid Mods, a 16 of Gene Stealers with Scything Talons and four Acid Mods, 10 Hormigaunts, it's got a turret of warriors with lash rips and bone swords, as well as adrenal glands and the synaptic link of bioweapon bond to give out that plus one to hit. Two pyrovores, uh, two single pyrovores. I really doubled down, did my homework here. I was like, do you know what I need? Scoring. Two pyrovores. Best shit I could pick. Uh, two lictors to actually score. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then uh, six hive guards with impaler cannons and progeny of the hive to give them enhanced resistance, allowing them to ignore AP1 and 2. And then five more hive guard because originality is dead. And that's it. That's fair. So, Danny, uh, before we go out and talk to Ennis about kind of his thoughts on list construction, what it does, why he picked what it is, what's your gut first reaction uh, to this list? Uh, what, like what? Like, how do I feel about the list? Yeah, how do you feel about it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a pretty typical Tyranids list, I feel like. Oh, sick burn. Yeah, what what do you want? Do you want me to talk shit about it? I don't know. It's I mean, I, ideally, I mean that's that's the point of like dueling oh. this. Sorry. Yeah, it sucks. Do you have any <laughs> be more constructive with your feedback, please? <laughs> no. <laughs> Amazing. So it I is pals, about the list. You said you had two pyrovores in there, probably just because you were made to put them in and you had some spare points left over. But what does that list do? Uh, well, kind of... let's start with the easy bit. It's pure Terranids, yeah. because you sent me the message that said it needs to be Terranids, and I read that as don't put Gene Silicon in it. So if Danny's put Gene Silicon in, I'm going to be upset, and I'm going to have him like kicked out on a technicality. That's no, the no, first no. thing I want to it's, start with. It's not a Forces of the Hive Mind list. In cool. it, so, yeah, it has yeah. to be Terranids. So yeah, yeah, that's why it's terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, not it, terrible. It, it's pretty bad. Um, yeah, so I basically just built a Terranids list that loses to like things that can move fast and go can go first um so this is bad uh, you shouldn't play this but what it does do is it shoots a lot and it has some dealers <laughs> that can go and play the mission and the power of wars can be obsec and double move i guess they can't die to that so they're only really bad at it and slower than every other option but they have a flame or two that they can't use if you double move them with the stratagem um so they're <laughs> also irrelevant um <laughs> They're enough CP that you, if you try to put them in reserve with a squad of the Dev the Termagants, uh, it costs you extra CP, so you don't want to do that. And you're not going to do it by themselves, because then you'd have to pay CP for them, defeating the point. Um, so they're literally, they're two drops. Um, you might get to like hide your Hive Guard slightly better, because their dumbass bases don't take up that much space when you put them in the open, so they die first and you don't have to think about <laughs> them anymore. I, I like the fact that, that your explanation for your list is, it's a standard tiered list. It's awful. Also, these two shitty units are here, too, because you made me take them. What do they do? Very little. That's my list. If it, re Perfect. if it really came to it, there is a world where I could imagine you've got your like you've got your big castle, you've got your uh, hive guard sat behind it, you've got your last rip bone sword warriors preventing them from getting charged and tagged because they get to stand there when they die, and then you've got two pyrovores to the side, so that if anything does sneak around, the pyrovores with their monstrous power sword attacks might kill a model and make it easier for everything else to smite them off. They won't, Beautiful. but they might. Beautiful. Danny, uh, why don't you take us through your Tyranid list, and uh, not as uh, Cap and Andrew let us know, the made-up FLG term of forces of the hive mind. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. So it's just, it's a Tyranid list. Um, I just took a single right. uh, <laughs> Leviathan Battalion. Um, so I have uh, my HQs. I like to not to take the Swarm Lord. 
Uh, I didn't feel like it was going to be super necessary for me because I don't have any assault units um, or units that I really feel like I need to move twice. Like other than I'm just going to spend, po- I'm just going to spend CP to move like mo- double move a unit. Right. So uh, I of course lead off with uh, my warlord, right. Which is a neurothrope. And I gave, he's got swarm leader and re- uh, the resonance barb. Um, uh, and then I have a uh, Turvagon, uh, and I went ahead and paid for a Willow trade for him to give him strategic adaptation. So I can st- throw stuff in strategic. Oh, uh, Danny, Danny's list, so Danny's list illegal. Um, I'm sorry. Alpha Leader Beast is, uh, the one that lets you buy your Warlord an extra Warlord trait, not buy a second character a Warlord trait. You lose. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> so I didn't spend a CP for my list? Yeah, then? exactly. Cheat. Okay, cool. <laughs> 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 all right that's fine um he's got the biomorphic carapace uh, he's got uh and he's got the weaponized gestation as well um and no it's a, it's it's i think it's probably an it if you want to be like specific. so for, for context on the everybody who doesn't know terranid rules that's minus one to wound and yeah. you can give a unit within synaptic link range uh rear ones and twos to wound twos with to range wound. attacks only yep yep um, and then I've got uh, Malanthrope. Um, I've got uh, a unit of three warriors uh, with. Uh, uh, I should. I. I think I have the points for this. Uh, like I think I had five spare points uh, with double scything talents, but they should have. They should have a bone sword for sure, uh, and lash whip. So obviously the no consolidation thing is pretty good. Uh, I don't know. I barely played Tyranids. Uh, then I've got two times thirty Termagants uh, with twenty devourers and 10, 10 flesh warriors. And then two units of 29 Termagants with no upgrades at all. Um, I've got two Lictors. I've got six Hive Guard with the Enhanced Resistance. Um, I've got a Malaceptor with Focal Essence. And then two units of three pyrovor- Pyrovores. That's right. I got oh. six Pyrovores in this list. I think that's more than exists in GW's warehouse. True, probably. Well, the, more than they've ever sold, actually. They've definitely sold more because people use them as biovore conversions. <laughs> they are much better biovores. Yeah, yeah that's fair. That's true. And then I've got two units of three Sky Slashers because Sky Slashers are dope. That's all slashers with the Yeah. Okay, so aside from so jumping in and telling him is least illegal, uh, which, you know, uh, appreciate the smack talk right there. It yeah. is. So it's what is bad. your... Your, what is your takeaway? <laughs> What's your takeaway on the list, Danny? So lovingly crafted. So I want to start with just like, as everybody I'm assuming is aware of the unkillable order change with like the three up and vulnerable save, the minus one damage, this is a feel no pain. That's like she opts out, it opts out of damage. It doesn't do very much, but it also doesn't take very much. Um, but it does do something. Like it stands about places, it gets in the way. The Tarvagon is like that, except it does less somehow. Um, so I would hardly recommend nobody ever does that. You should probably also find the way to give it the five up invulnerable save because otherwise it's just going to die. Um, I like the fact that you've decided to make your units worse in order to accommodate the bad unit as well. So you've got those <laughs> those twenty devourer gone. Well, I didn't have to pay points. Worse. I didn't have to pay points for that. Yeah, so but you also don't get the shots worse. for them. Sure. So, but like squad- the fact that they're sta- that they're starting on the table for the most part, like. I, I find that I'm going to have units that are going to be tailing back to my synapse and that kind of stuff anyway. So yeah, a lot of times they're not going to be in, in long range. enough range. No, it's just because with turnids, it's all about um, maximizing efficiency because your units don't really do much without spending CP. So you're sure. losing like 40 shots on Relentless Flurry, 80 shots on Double Tap, um, 80 shots with Relentless Flurry and Double Tap. Potentially. Just, you're costing maybe. a lot of stuff. You're 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 speaking about a lot of like maybe like potentialities and not necessarily you, like if you're bringing strategic adaptation, you can put them both into reserve <laughs> and then bring them on guaranteed and get the damage output always. Well, you just told me I couldn't bring strategic adaptation. Well, so... you could, but if you just like put it on the right unit. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you can have it. You just have to read the rules properly, Danny. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you. So anyway, anyway, basically, you've decided to play a really, really slower, even slower version of the turn list that only has shooting options um, yeah. instead of having anything that can like go and score or kill a thing behind a wall except six hive guard. Um, okay. I- I'm impressed. I didn't think there was a way to write a worse good Terranid list, <laughs> but you found it. <laughs> well, thanks, man. I'm really glad. Yeah. It is I, Wilson, I the, the Gordon Ramsay of 40k coaching. Um, just... <laughs> just... Sorry, I didn't know the down. secret ingredient was just like a splash, like you could take one of something and that would be sufficient. I tried to more or less like, you know, uh, take some beef in the secret ingredient. I mean, it would be you, nice, but I don't think you would actually taste any of the flavor of pyrovore. You didn't realize the the secret ingredient was just negativity. 
because yeah, sorry, you know, I should have when I you, knew uh, we were going to have Ennis on. Absolutely, rules is you rules is your rules is intended. This the rules is right all the way. <laughs> absolutely, baby. He absolutely. said you have to take one. I took two. I figured that was good no, enough. No, I don't think he said you had to take any. I think it was just this is the secret ingredient. Yeah. You could have shown like, up with none and then just lost automatically. <laughs> yeah, what but are you said you've chosen Manny. to take two and still lose automatically. Yeah, I'm submitting submitting Manny's Austin list. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair, um, Danny. Real quick. How, and this is a question you've asked me many a times when you've looked at my bizarre, crappy army lists, bewildered. How does your list win? Oh, uh, it just... It, <laughs> thanks. Uh, no, it just kind of... it Mostly it just stays on, on my side of the table. It doesn't really move past the center line unless it has to, which it can through a couple of different options. Like you've got Lictors, uh, you've got Sky Slashers, you probably have Pyrovores and Strategic Reserve. Um, so... You've got a couple Amazing. of options there. And then, and it's just to run this out here with Terry, uh, as, as positive as you were about your list, um, how does your list win? Oh, it kills everything with guns and then controls the poor with Gene Steelers, but it also loses games where it goes second um, to just getting turn one charge because it can't protect its hive guard. Um, but if it goes first, it'll just kill shit. All right, so Danny, uh, you go. You win by guarding your half of the board, maximizing your objectives, and choosing the right secondary. And it's your list wins by going first and not being charged. Um, well, I mean, if your opponent doesn't have any chargey stuff, it will kill them going second as well. But uh, if it, they're playing bad <laughs> lists too, then maybe. And and chat, feel free to let us know uh, for the Tyranids whose list was better. Whose do you like more? Uh, Ennis's uh, built for winning list. Or Danny's stylish, maximized beef tyrannid list. <laughs> um, moving on, uh, we also asked you guys. Like I know, uh, Ennis, you you play tyrannids pretty hardcore. Danny, this next one was for you. It's a Necron list. Um, I asked you both to create a Necron list, and Danny, please remind me because I forgot what was the name of the thing I asked you to include in the Necron list. The Canoptic Plasma Site, which is the actually Canoptic a good Plasma unit. Site, which you know I believe off the top of my head was the tall uh, War of the Worlds looking guy with a plasma cannon, which is why Wahabedia yeah. is a bad place because it doesn't give you pictures of the units. Yeah, you're but thinking anyway, of the Canoptic Doomstalker. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, like a 130 point yeah. unit this collective plasma is 15 points 15 points john there so yeah. so tell us about the standard necron list you made <laughs> minus one immortal for this uh, the canaltic oh for, sorry did you say me yeah okay i can tell yeah you yeah me. uh so let's see so i'm doing a, a patrol and an outrider uh the relentlessly expansionist eternal conquerors kind of like you would expect um so i'm running a catacomb command barge um, with the, the Implacable Conqueror Warlord trait, so he gets a six-inch bubble of reroll charges for core units, as well as the Voltaic Staff, and uh, he's got the Hand of the Pharaon stratagem uh, and a Goss Cannon. Uh, well, that lets him do two My Will Be Dones per turn. Um, and I've got a Chronomancer with the Entropic Lance and a Veil of Darkness. Uh, I have five Immortals with Tesla Carbines. Um, and then I've got... Uh, sorry, this is the patrol I'm talking about specifically first. Um, and then I've got two units of five Scorp Pack Destroyers, um, three units of one Canoptic Plasma Site, uh, two units of three Locust Heavy Destroyers with Goss Destructors. Um, and then I've got an Outrider that's the same Relentlessly Expansionist and Eternal Conquerors uh, with a Technomancer with the Canoptic Cloak, um, two units of three Canoptic Scarab Swarms, three units of five Canoptic Wraiths, another unit of five uh, Scorp Pack Destroyers, and then uh, two Crypto Thralls. So, Perfect. yep. So this no, list is combat, quick. a lot of combat. So Innes, uh, with your your thousands of hours of Necron knowledge, uh, what is your takeaway of Danny's Canoptic list? I vibe with that. That looks fun. Beautiful and non-committal. I love it. <laughs> Danny, tell us about your list. What does it do? Uh, why did you design that way? Extra style points for Danny for maxing out, uh, again, slots for the, oh, the yeah. required unit. I spent a whole um, 45 points to do that, John. I should get a huge pat on the back for that. Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> Danny's always maxing out slots. Uh, but anyway, tell us about your army list yeah, that you created for the So, Necron. like, the... Uh, <laughs> so, the cool thing about the Canoptic Plasma Sites, just to, like, be specific, like, they are... They basically get bodyguard as long as they're around uh, destroyer units. Um, so they can kind of like sit on an objective in the open and not be able to be shot, which is a pretty nice ability. Um, but this list is mostly combat with a couple of, with a couple of shooting units. Like I've got 
the immortals are definitely the immortals and the canopic and the crypto thralls are like really objective sitters or strategic strategic reserve targets so you can put them in reserve and then have them like walk on the sides of the board onto objectives and things like that later on um, but since everything is obsec troops aren't super important uh, on this list and it's just otherwise a lot of hard-hitting close combat uh, that's pretty fast. Uh, like the rates can be movement 14 and then also moves six inches before the game starts. Uh, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm having just awful flashbacks to every time I play your Necrons and you're just like, uh, everything is objective secured. This thing, objective <laughs> secured. This thing, objective secured. Yeah. Cool. Mm, gross. I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> how, does, how does that list win? Apart from everything being objective secured fast and very tough. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say everything is very tough. It's like medium tough, um, but it's 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 all pretty quick. Um, it gets to where it needs to go. Like it doesn't have a lot of like anti infantry firepower, so removing a lot of models is probably pretty difficult. But it does have some really good close combat attacks, and especially mass volume of attacks between the Scorpex and the and the Wraiths. Um, uh, so it kind of gets on objectives. Is t- is usually like either tougher than you were in combat. Um, and you can kind of sacrifice some units because every single one of those units of five is 15 wounds at toughness five with either a three up save and minus one to wound often or Mm -hmm. a four plus invulnerable save. Um, so like they have some durability that, uh, can stick around. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, that's, that's kind of the key to the victory for this. this Amazing. And just adding in a couple of things here that are coming through from chat. Uh, one, Wahapedia does have pictures of units. So it's like an extra sail in the pirate ship right there. Um, and now I know how to find them. Uh, and two, uh, someone said, wasn't medium tough as Sylvester Stallone movie? Um, which most likely, uh, who knows? He makes so many and they're all so, so solid and good. Uh, Innes, tell us about your Necron list. Yeah, this is just a real similar <laughs> 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 not quite i've gone uh, i've got a slightly different right so i am playing um, eternal conquerors and relentlessly expansionist the surprise hey. of probably nobody however i am playing an outrider and an auxiliary support detachment which means one thing to people who kind of know necrons so my warlord is anrakir the traveler who has the implacable warlord trait that danny had on his silent ki- on his uh command barge which is the bubble aura of um reroll charges he also provides a plus one attack aura for core which i quite like uh, we have a Kaku command barge who I am running slightly differently. We have the Goss cannon, but also a War Scythe because I couldn't fit the Voltaic staff in because he's got the Veil of Darkness. You know, really <laughs> mixing it up. Uh, so he's got the Veil of Darkness, and then he's also got Eternal Madness as his Warlord trait for rural wounds. Uh, we have a three, three, and four of Canoptic Scarabs to go around and be our scoring units. We have five, five, five of Canoptic Wraiths. One squad has two particle casters because I had ten points and couldn't buy another plasma site. Unfortunately, we have. 2x3 Locust Heavy Destroyers with the Goss Cannons, which are the 3d3 damage ones. Um, so, yeah, hitting on 3s, rolling 1s, and then getting those uh, getting those nice plus 1s from the My Will Be Dones once the Lord Overlords have run out of other things to do. Two Corrupted Clasm Sites to be Objective Secured Bodyguard, um, which can, well, Objective Secured Things being Bodyguard, <coughs> which is quite different from the normal sort of Bodyguard things we see. Typically, you see characters being the Bodyguard bodyguarded unit which don't often have obsec outside of maybe specifically space marines uh so it does give them a nice little dynamic that they are a little hard to steal objectives from and then we have the katan shard of the void dragon and a transcendent katan with cosmic tyrant because i like spam and katan are a good way to make your list a nice little skew when you're playing something where you're forced to use such expensive units as conductive plasma sites so you've just, you've just got to make it work somehow. In my defense, I googled very quickly to figure out what that unit was, and, and incorrectly. Um, and just to add on here, back to Wahapedia's uh, third mast in his pirate ship here with, with the pictures. Uh, Airborne's letting us know that the pics on Wahapedia are mostly nudes of Greg. Uh, for new listeners, uh, uh, Greg on Goonhammer, uh, for some reason, <laughs> drew the, the ire of Val. We're going to uh, talk about Val. him being naked now, too? Are we really doubling down on this? <laughs> well, look, I don't know what's going on. All I know is Val called out Greg. How do uh, I not be involved in ago. this bit? <laughs> Too late. But Val called out Greg three weeks ago uh, and has not been seen on this show since. T- tonight even, we're being produced again by Richard. Uh, it seems like, like a so real coward's move, to be honest with it, you. It, just does. Keep dodging it does. Greg so like once, once we find Val again, uh, we'll definitely have Greg on. So Val I reckon you would have a gone. Hold on. I have, I have something to say real quick before sure. we move on. 
Greg, I'm sorry for anything that's been said to you. Like, I just want you to know that I don't have any beef. I think your articles are extremely entertaining, and I feel for you. Love you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you're definitely, definitely only like one of the worst Gregs in the ITC. You're but not the worst. He's, he's one of the best. He's he's a right. top eight Greg. We went yeah. through this. Uh, we have we have literally and and thank you. We have a Wild Falcon in chat who let us know that Vel is a well known coward, which I'm sure yeah. he's very thankful for. Um, <laughs> oh, anyway, he wears a lot on. of dark colors to to cover up that yellow belly, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> amazing uh danny what is your take on ennis's necron list where it i is mean like how, how can how can i hate on it it's basically my list with with one of my units taken out and one of one of his put in like to be honest it's a good list like uh it's it's real solid so kudos you've you've, you've done a good job <laughs> Yeah, like... this this would have hurt for both of us, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> uh, just tallying up the votes here, and again, guys, please let us know in chat whose Necron list won. Was it Danny's? Was it Innes's? We have a new option uh, saying um, everyone lost, uh, which was from our last <laughs> round there. Uh, but Danny, you edged out Innes in the Tyranid list. Uh, really? Why? <laughs> I believe style style points were a factor. Okay, fair. Uh, so, fair. so for sure, yeah, style points were a factor. So good job uh, on both making terrible lists, but one uh, going to the spirit of it more than anything else. I should have run uh, six. I should have run nine. Should have run nine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Cap and Andrew, yes, Val is actually still commuting back from a very long and hard work week. We're just giving him shit. Uh, so. Uh, you guys moved on to the last uh, set of lists here. We asked you, or I asked Not you until we know who won. I need to know how I'm framing this conversation. Well, I don't find out until people have a chance to vote. We, <sighs> this, this this is America. You get time to vote, uh, Ennis. We don't line up Ennis, with our tea bags. Ennis, to you're going to have plenty to talk shit about with this list, so just... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just... So are you. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, just I've, wait. Let, <laughs> I've let both of these guys know. Uh, we have uh, LVO coming up around the band January for us is going to be LVO month where we kind of delve deep into um, all factors of what is one of the biggest events of the season. Um, I, of course, with all my hatred, uh, all Black Templars, will be taking Black Templars. Um, but what <laughs> what list will I take? Um, at this point, having not seen them, will I take the list that uh, Innes here has uh, decided? Or will I take the list that Danny here has decided? Uh, and that chat, for some bizarre reason, I'm leaving up to you. Oh, uh, so first Why off, would you do that. <laughs> the only winners off, here are John's opponents. Yeah, for no sure, kidding. for sure. Uh, just call me uh, Easy Win, uh, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> we'll start with who did I start with last time? Oh fuck, it doesn't matter. Sorry, you Dan. started with me last uh, time. You can start with Ennis uh, if you want. We'll start with Ennis. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you Guess tell go us, first. Uh, tell us your Black Templar <laughs> list. Now, the secret ingredient in this list. Uh, was Sword Brethren, uh, mainly because I looked at the book and went, why would I take this? So, please tell us your, your list, in this, uh, including at least one unit of Sword Brethren. Yeah, so I looked at the Wahapiti entry and said, why would he take this? And then I realized, <laughs> I, looked, I looked at your Twitter feed and was like, oh, he got sent a box. Cool. Yeah. I want to <laughs> say, uh, thank you to Games great. Workshop for the review copy uh, the, the, of the Sword Brethren that Mob Rules was sent. They're a fantastic kit. Um, I did order a second one. You should definitely go and buy some. Yeah. You don't need to order a third, mate. Uh <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn it. So, oh, man. Let us Innocent's start list might already be better than mine. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to start with the first bit. We're taking the vow of you get the five of them vulnerable save um, every yeah. game. There is yeah, there is no other course. option. You're going to have to. I'm sorry. Nothing. Were, in this were there works, any but... other vows in that supplement? <laughs> well, I when I get to what some of this stuff's armed with, you're going to need it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, we are starting with High Marshal Helbrecht, who has the Warlord Frontline Gaming Commander. Um, because you have to. He's, he's such a <laughs> great commander. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, we have two Redemptive Dreadnoughts with the standard Macroplasma Incinerator, Onslaught Gatling Cannon, Icarus Rocket Pod, and two Storm Bolters. Because One they are thing the I'm going to say about the only redeeming factor. Your Warlord trade is it only works in singles events. It doesn't really do great with team events. Well, it works in team events. You just have to like change the format of your list a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we have... <laughs> 
Thank you for the sensible chuckle, Danny, uh, for our shield joke. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> then we have five infiltrators with a helix gauntlet because I had ten points and I didn't know what to spend them on anywhere else. Then we come on to the uh, the real detachment on the list, which is a Black Templar's Vanguard detachment, which I would only describe as the worst kind of violence, violence against the list writer. So we have a Primaris <laughs> Catholic on bike, who is a Master Sanctity. He has the relic Tannhauser's Bones, which reduces all damage taken to one, uh, so he can sit and be a failure for longer. And then he has Hero of the Chapter for Imperium Sword for plus one strength and attack on the charge. His litanies are Mantra of Strength and Canticle of Hate, so he can buff himself up to be really, really good at hitting things almost kind of hard uh, and getting things to combat faster. That, the combat things faster is more important, but I didn't want to make him reliable because that didn't feel like it fit with the theme of the list because reliability is not really a thing you're getting. Then we have a squad of Vanguard veterans with five jump packs, five lightning claws, four storm shields, and then the sergeant has a power sword and Sigismund's seal, which is the seal of oath equivalent, so you pick a unit at the start of the game to get rerolls to hit and wound in melee against. The sergeant is then further upgraded with two more two more CP just to make sure he's really, really buffed. So he Why? is a, <laughs> So he is Why? a champ he is a champion of the feast, which gives him plus one weapon skill, plus one attack, and plus one oh, wound. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then he also has a relic with the Sword of Judgment to make him three damage in combat. <laughs> so, like, he hits really hard. And he is also, like, a dude with a three up armor save. <laughs> with this four buddies. Like, he's got four buddies with Starve Shields. So it's okay. Part of, me, part of me wanted to read the list before I made this giant kind of commitment. Yeah, you commitment. should have done that. No, that's fair. Um, then, he does get a 5 of invulnerable save from the value. You have to remember that bit. Uh, then we have two more identical squads of Vanguard veterans with five jump packs, five lightning claws, four storm shields, and the sergeant has a thunder hammer instead of a storm shield because uh, I hate you. Then we have three squads of Primaris sword brethren. One each, one model in each squad has two times lightning claws. I don't know what you get in the box. I hope it's not four regular dudes. I hope you have to like buy six boxes to get all the generic models. Well, thank you. Hashtag add uh, Games Workshop. You actually get one of every weapon option and the ability to make your whole squad with power swords or chain swords. I'm genuinely disappointed. Uh, and then one of the sergeants has the <laughs> one of the sergeants has the bones of Mordred, which gives him uh, sixes to wound, inflict a mortal wound in addition to regular damage. And because he's got double lightning claws, I, I don't actually think you get sergeants in these squads. He's just a dude with like six attacks on the charge with some mortal wounds. Um, it's your only anti tank other than plasma cannons. So I hope that kills stuff. And then we <laughs> we have the uh, the really good bit. Uh, three impulsors. Two of which have orbital comms arrays, and one of which doesn't have an upgrade. <laughs> I think my favorite thing about that is the seventy-five dollar like infantry tank. <laughs> like that's. Oh, don't right worry, there. John. Just wait till we see. <laughs> wait till we go over mine. Yeah. So they they have um, orbital comms arrays because I looked at all the gun options and was like, nah, he might have he might not have those modeled. And then I looked at the orbital comms array, I was like, he's definitely not gonna have those modeled. And went with those. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. that's it. That's that's two thousand points. Um, and then uh, Falcon it's coming right. in is letting us know that uh, those cuts on frontline gaming and Reese is bleeding from those deep cuts. Um, and then I was going to say he took a picture of the cuts, but really it was just the ceiling in the room he was in. So mm. we didn't really even notice it. That makes sense. Um, but Danny, what is your initial kind of thoughts on, on that uh, list? Apart from the fact that Ennis just spent CP like it was, yeah, you know, gyro it was day. candy. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I, th yeah, I, I think I don't have any CP I spent. I just hope for the best. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ennis doesn't care about that. That's not. You don't have to reroll anything. What even is that? What's over? The, the CP only exists to jump shoot, jump your redemptors in and out of ruins, right? <laughs> right. How many redemptors does your list have? Three, two, two, two. All right. I, I run out of elite slots. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I mean, redemptors are probably pretty good in Black Templars. I feel like that's a good addition to the list. Uh, Sword brethren are a little weak though. No thunder hammers. I'm disappointed about that. Yeah, <laughs> I too. Because I pull one of the boxes with a thunder hammer. <laughs> that's where my insider knowledge comes in i'm like oh no. yeah i included the thunder hammers in my units so the problem is that the, the, the now that the chat knows that john has a thunder hammer model built they're gonna like not vote for one with thunder hammers because it'll mean he wouldn't have to buy more boxes. would you stop would you stop like <laughs> directing the chat how to vote until we've even heard the second no line? i hear i hear directly the chat how to vote as an american institution so <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I've heard that before. Know, 
and I trust Falcon on math implicitly. This list starts with minus one CP. Fantastic. Uh, or minus minus two by Rich's chat. So good job. Uh, hopefully that means I can I can BS it and say that because the list was illegal that I can't actually take it. Uh, anyway, Danny, what was your list for, for Black Templars? All right. So I've got a double patrol. Uh, okay. I've got uh, a pre- so I've got a warlord <laughs> who's a primaris chaplain on bike with Tannhauser's bones, who is master of sanctity. Um, but then I've given him the heir of Sigispun, so he gets double warlord trait. And so he's got a uh, rights of war and inspirational fighter, um, just in case you need some extra AP on the chain swords or for the incursor knives. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of Drakari about. I need all the chainsaw AP that I can get. I know. I'm telling you. See, that's what I'm trying to do for you here. Um, so then I've got uh, a unit of six blade guard veterans uh, with a crux obsidian. Um, mm-hmm. and the champion is the, uh, is the champion of the feast. So he gets the plus one wound and everything. And he's minus one damage. Um, so you can put a bunch of wounds on him and he'll probably die. And then he'll be happy because he soaked up a bunch of damage. Hopefully, hopefully that happens for you. Um, then I've got 10 sword brethren, <laughs> a unit of 10 sword brethren with two thunder hammers and two power swords. Cause that's what I had points for, for power swords. Um, uh, then five incursors. Uh, and then two times three eliminators, and two impulsors with just storm bolters, nothing else. Uh, and Ooh. then I've got a second patrol where we've okay. got high marshal Hellbrick. Um, I've got two units of three blade guard veterans, uh, five incursors, three more eliminators, and then also three more impulsors <laughs> uh, with just storm bolters full and sky Five hundred dollars worth of impulsors. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> You don't what you don't have five impulsors, <laughs> amateur. Five impulsors that don't have shield domes. They can't have shield domes. John, that doesn't matter. Really it's unimportant. <laughs> yeah, don't build them with shield domes. That's a that's that's a choice for idiots. So, <laughs> John, what I've done is I've taken the army special sure. rules and I've given them shield domes with my army special rules instead. That's what I've done. So, so they get like just uh, five up and vulnerable on a five up and vulnerable. Right. And so, like, the Blade Guard and the Sword Brethren probably are going to be combat squatting. Um, so, y- the idea is is that three of the Impulsors have three Blade Guard veterans, and then also three Eliminators in, in, in them. And then mm-hmm. uh, the other couple have uh, uh, some, some of the Sword Brethren. Well, I dislike both of these immensely. And I have to say, as someone in us who, who won a major with Space Marines, and Danny, who owns multiple different Space Marines, um, I am surprised uh, and excited, shall we say, about what the results are going to be. Chat, go, go ahead and vote. We're going to talk with Ennis here. I'm kind of about- disappointed, Danny, that you gave him scoring options, like eliminating yeah, stuff. I know. Like, <laughs> I tried to give him some tricks. Like, I'm just thinking, like, that. they can, like, Impulsor can move, they can disembark, move, advance, shoot, move again. Like, that. that's far too much distance. You gave him rights of war? What do you want him to go positive? <laughs> you're right. right i'm sorry i i need to change that can i amend my roster please <laughs> no uh what we're gonna do here uh, in this, uh, uh danny we're gonna talk to you guys about that quarterly balance update that came in kind of what we're seeing how that's adjusting lists and kind of helping out the game balance uh in a way falcon stop voting i haven't even asked yet um and then uh while we're doing that Get your guys' votes in. Do you think, would you rather uh, uh, John goes to LVO with Danny's Black Templar list, loses because of his own lack of skill and has no backup excuses, well, or goes okay. to, to LVO with Innes' list, uh, loses, but has a built-in excuse that it was a terrible list? It was built by a foreigner. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, I mean, let, let me know. Technic- aren't technically you the foreigner on this show at this moment, just by like, Sheer volume. Oh my god! I think sheer volume. Yeah, Danny is the foreigner right now because there's two Scottish people and a Canadian. So yeah. <laughs> well, well, wait a minute. By sheer volume, let me tell you. I may be bigger than both you Danny. and John. So, <laughs> and it's... I mean, oh. I'll take it. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, government subsidized pharmacies. Uh, anyway, uh, we so already moving on. <laughs> Go Canada, on. yeah. <laughs> uh, last week, GW kind of uh, 
said they were going to stick to a quarterly uh, balance update almost of the game. Uh, and some of this we're seeing come in um, where where kind of the orcs were just beaten to death. Uh, kind of, and like, I know duct taping errors and everything, but it was like a very harsh thing. Also saw like an Imperial Guard get a boost, Chaos Knights get a boost. Ennis, what is kind of your, your high-level overview of the changes we saw to the game based on last week's update? Everything that beat Drakari got worse, but Drakari got a little better, uh, which isn't a good sign. Grey Knights are lost like all their natural predators. Nobody's going to play Admech anymore because they're too expensive to justify changing your list again. Knight's real good now. Go play Iron Hands. That's all I got. Nice. Danny, did you want to kind of summarize it in an actual sentence, or did you just want to use bullet points as well? No, I'm just going to steal Ennis's Iron Hands list. That's actually what's going to happen. <laughs> So, so Ennis, did the, did the event you go to, you went to over the weekend that you won? Was that using that new FAQ? It was, yeah. So all yeah. of the uh, all the nasty, scary things like orcs, um, nah, no one of those. We just get to we just like kill the rock, kill the one squad of rocket trucks and win the game. Now we don't have to deal with <laughs> nine of the things. Space Marines, like the only thing that we were scared of anymore was was rocket trucks and Admech planes, and they ain't around no more. <laughs> it's great, no. loving it. <laughs> I will uh, say unfortunately, the new... there were like 37 Dread Knights in the top five, but <laughs> oh god, so two army lists of Grey Knights, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the top ten, the top ten of my event was uh, four Grey Knight play- or four Grey Knights and three Imperial Knight players. It was horrifying. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, so I will say like you have stay. called, you have called for like uh, possibly even harsher restrictions than than even GW did from this quarterly update. Kind of. If you followed uh, uh, you on Twitter, which again, don't do if you don't want these jokes to be fresh. Um, like you were even calling for like one plane or like even like a rule of two. Like like how much of this was satirical bullshit and how much of this was actual health of the game? Like it's good going forward. About half and half. Like I genuinely think there are there could be more restrictive on some of the things that they are. Uh, I would like to see things like a lot of data sheets that are very similar to each other be treated the same. So you know how like uh, Demon Princes, depending on what, what, no matter what book they are, are considered the same data sheet. I'd like to see that for Nemesis Dread Knights, for example, where they're just mm-hmm. you get three total, whether they're Grandmasters or regular. I'd like to see that for whether it's like Hive Tyrants and Swarm Lord just being treated as the same data sheet, and just anything down the line, uh, Tank Commanders and Lehman Russes, just anything where it's the same unit. There's just two different like variants of it. One's a character, one's not, or whatever. Um, just treat them the same. Uh, I'm down for putting Rule of Three on transports. Uh, I think that's mostly just because I hate Dark Eldar, or, or Eldar in general. Um, so that's kind of half a joke and half, please, dear God, don't let me play Dark Eldar anymore. Um, <laughs> and, best I can do is what covens. <laughs> Isn't that like the new hardest now? And then uh, they, can go, they can go ahead and put High Guard on the ground. I really, really don't mind. As a turreted lover since like I started playing 40k, like, 12 years ago, uh, Turnits were like the first army that I bought that wasn't in the starter set. I don't care. Please, just please let me use other units. Please. <laughs> Danny, what are some things that were missed out of this balance update? Of course, they kind of hit the main concerns right now, which were like the Admech, the Drakari, kind of the Orc buggy flyer spam. What are some things that they like? you feel they should have got to that they didn't? Well, I mean, this is kind of based on their model where they're updating stuff from a while ago. I'm glad that they finally decided that they were going to release this, um, but they did miss some of the like the newer books that have maybe are a little bit unbalanced, like Grey Knights, Tyranids, that kind of stuff. So we'll see if those get hit in the near future or not, and then we'll see if there's any kind of points adjustments, because while armies like like Necrons and things like that did get a bit better with the addition of core. Like, I think that there's probably some points updates that need to happen in order for that, like that, that kind of an army in particular, or maybe even uh, some of the lesser used Marine factions to kind of get their day in the sun. Um, if some of their units might be able to get some, some needed point drops and then maybe some, up uh, some points increases for some of the units that really need it. Like, Talos. Uh, yeah. Like Talos. <laughs> Why did those go down? <laughs> Come on. Like, it's just because no one was using them. Like, I, I feel like it's just because, like, they were like, well, you know, no one's using Talos right now. So let's, 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 incre- let's uh, reduce their points. But it's like, no, no one's using them because everything else is broken. But then, like, we'll switch, we'll just switch hot swap to the next one. So, like, while we might have quarterly balance updates, if we, if they don't hit more than just the units that get seen on the regular, then we're just going to see what, what's the new Drakari list this quarter. 
Like that's mm-hmm. what it's going to be. Like what's, <laughs> what's so the top dog? Eventually, we'll be losing to Claude Fins and Camira, and it right, will still exactly. be like <laughs> bloody Jakari. <laughs> Gotta be kidding me! <laughs> How are these still good? <laughs> just going to be like all scourges and like. It's just, the, my favorite, my favorite thing from the balance update has been um, talking to Dark Elder players about Blood Brides, and they're like, "Yeah, this 150 point unit that kills anything in the game is too expensive for me," and I'm like, uh, "That's the best unit in any codex. It's not Jakari." Right. And right. they're like, no, nah, I'd rather have everything else. For only have, 150 have... points, by the way. Like, keep that in mind. Yeah, too. I'll just have, I'll have four other units instead. It's fine. Oh. And then they do get four other units, and it feels really right. bad. Right. And then we're going to round this off uh, by, by asking you both here. Uh, chapter approved, right around the corner, coming up. Um, Hopefully. What, right. After last year's very disappointing chapter approved, uh, which felt kind of more like... I don't know. I think the biggest change in the book was them removing the coils and just binding the thing. Uh, we're going to start with our guest, Innes. Uh, Innes, what are some things you're looking to see from Chapter Approved this year to kind of feel like a real commitment to the game? Oh, I, have, I have a whole list of these. Uh, I would like to see all of the mission-specific secondaries get put into categories. So, for example, uh, Direct Assault gets put in the same category as Battlefield Supremacy, so you can't take that alongside Stranglehold and things like that. Uh, retru- uh, minimized Losses from Retrieval Mission gets put in the same category as to the last, so you can't double down. And just limit some of that spam. You get another option for the mission-specific uh, for that category, but you don't get to just take everything. Or Mission Secondary and Faction Secondary are mutually exclusive. You can only have one or the other, not both. Um, one of those two I would like to see. I would like to see the scouring. If it sticks around, have a normal deployment zone, please. I played that mission last weekend. It's horrible because armies don't, you can't fit in it. And then like anything that's like a preset terrain setup for an event doesn't work on the scouring because the deployment zone just doesn't work the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I would like to see some things um, just tweet about, like priority targets, just needs a couple of tweaks. If they're not going to wholesale rewrite missions, which I don't really see happening, uh, and then fix investigate sites, because um, you said you were fixing it and then you didn't. Could you just fix that, please? It'd make me feel better. <laughs> It's right in line behind the water pipe that they're going to fix. Uh, and then, yeah, rule of, rule of three for transports. Come on, guys, you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Danny, what are some changes you want to see from chapter approved? Uh, in general, I'd just like to see, uh, like, a fixing, like, Innes, Innes pointed out, I mean, obviously some some points breaks would be great, but, like, if we're talking about that and the Munitorium Field Guide, if that's if they're included in the same document, which technically they're not, but uh, if we're specifically talking about chapter approved, then yeah, fixing secondaries, I think is key. Um, uh, that's super important. I'd also like to see um, some specific guidance on terrain placement. Um, I think with the, like, or, or amount of terrain uh, based on uh, like what kind of mission is being played or maybe positional terrain based on what's, what mission is being played. If we're going to have like some set terrain, I think that would be really nice. Um, but uh We'll 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 see if we ever get recommendations for that. Um, that would be my that's the top of my wish list anyway. Yes, no, great things for there. And just to answer a couple of questions from chat there, yes, this is the same frontline gaming that sells many stuff. Frontlinegaming.org. We just paid a bill. Good job, um, Innes. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to us about these three. Well, one good Necron list, and then two okay other lists. Um, I will say. Uh, the chat got distracted by by you and Danny's amazing takes on, on kind of the balance update. And so we're currently at a tie uh, as one person votes for Innis regardless of what happens. And thank you for that, Falcon. And then the other person uh, voted for whatever made me spend more money on impulsors. Uh, mm. So we're we're gonna we're gonna figure out this tiebreaker. Uh, but one of those things will be going and it'll be the sole oh, reason God, that I go oh and six. It's great. Who yes. knows? Please blame me. Yeah, it'll, yeah be the sole, it'll be the sole reason, totally. The sole reason. The sole reason. Everyone knows. The sole reason, yep. <laughs> the only thing stopping that Quinell sweep uh, is uh, uh, a lack of understanding of the basic game rules. Uh, Ennis, <laughs> before we go, uh, go ahead, plug your stuff. How do people find you? Why should people find you? Uh, all that other kind of fun. Uh, well, I hope, they, I hope they don't find me, unless it's at an event. Just generally don't like try to find me. That would be really uncomfortable. Uh, you can follow me specifically on uh, uh, twitter.com slash Innes A. Wilson. Uh, Innes is I-double-N-E-S. Uh, I post terrible takes there and John steals them. Uh, and I'm okay with that because all publicity is good publicity, even if he's not like saying it's from me, which he doesn't because he's <laughs> terrible. 
Um, and then if you want to follow just like what we're getting on with generally, uh, the Scottish 40k scene is like that. That is Team Scotland Warhammer 40k on Facebook. Uh, and we do all of our like uh, event posts, all of our WTC stuff. If you care about that weird team format that people in Europe talk about. Um, yeah, that, that's where you can find me. Uh, I don't really do much else besides that. I tend to just guest on podcasts because it's way easier. <laughs> Absolutely. Danny, well, what have you got before we head on out of here? No, just a big thank you to Ennis for coming on and yeah. chatting with us. Thanks for thanks for dueling lists with me. Um, it was fun, of course. Technically, always. Danny, you won. So, so oh, that's the important that's, part. That's stupid. I shouldn't have won. You were 2-0 <laughs> going in. Purely because of the style points uh, of taking maximum pyrovores. So so I just like to point out that like my me framing the rules at the beginning to make sure that I got extra points was really important here. Yeah. I think it's called angle shooting. I don't yeah. know though. I don't know. I've never heard of that before. Personally, I think we should have stopped the count at zero, but you know, can't win them all. <laughs> oh, and then Nurgle Matthew saying, thanks, Ennis. Another banger. Boss Baby to ride 10th edition. I just want to, one, he's much older. It's Boss Toddler now. Uh, two, um, I would pay to have a webcam stream of Ennis in front of a, just a pile of paper. I uh, just really stressed out about releasing a book because I feel that would be very fun. Well, the first thing uh, would have to be invisibility's back, guys. Uh, no, I'm sorry. no, 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 we're done. See what you've done. That's it. You're you're That's never done. allowed back here. This is the most oh offensive God. thing we've said. <laughs> this, that's the most offensive thing anyone's ever said on this. And I talked about Nazis earlier to the point where Seth kicked me off the whole network for two minutes. Um, <laughs> but uh, for yeah, so for our editor Tyler, for producer uh, Richard, from Danny, for Innes, for myself, John, uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. Danny and I will be back next week uh, with something so amazing I couldn't possibly book it in advance. Uh, and we will see you uh, Monday. <laughs>